Hey everyone, I'm Todd Wayne along with Ronnie Heelan. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Paranomaly Podcast. Now, tonight we're talking to Damian Christie, who is one of the co-founders of RKB Paranormal. And he's investigated some of the most haunted locations in the South. And not only did he investigate the Brushy Mountain Penitentiary, but also the historic Scott County Jail, uh, the Octagon Hall, and Hotel Metropolitan. So that's just to name a few folks. They've been all over. So now RKB Paranormal has been interviewed for several podcasts. They've had stories about their team featured in the local newspapers. And Damien decided to start his own paranormal podcast in late July of 2022 called Life Beyond Six Feet. So don't forget to check that out because it's a good one. So grab yourself a drink and a snack, turn the lights off on the way back, find yourself a nice comfy spot, and enjoy this episode of Paranomaly. Stay with us, folks. All right, Damien. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I mean, what you want to know? Well, we went, what got you into the paranormal? Oh, man, I've, I've, I've been into it ever since I can remember. Um, like my, my first experience, I remember I was about three years old. And I woke up in the middle of the night and there was what I can best describe as like a witch type figure just kind of floating above me. And of course, you know, being three years old, it kind of freaked me out. So I covered my head up. And when I pulled the cover back down, she was still there. And telling my parents about it the next morning they were like oh you know you just had a dream this and that but i know i was wide awake yeah and i have an absolute terrible memory but i remember that like it happened yesterday and it's always stuck with me so i've always considered that my first paranormal experience and just growing up having all these different experiences as a kid and then when i became a teenager i I really got into it and i've been pretty much hooked ever since i was a teenager nice so you have you have a group now, right? Is that your group? Correct. And when did you start your group? Uh, about almost three years ago. We started up in June, end of June of 2020. And that's RKB Paranormal, correct? Yes, yes, sir. Awesome. So, do you guys do residential or business or what? What kind of places you investigate? Um, we've been asked quite a bit to do residential um we kind of say we kind of shy away from it for different reasons for kind of for all of us but um so we mostly do you know we do a lot of the the pay-to-play places and we do have some business businesses that have reached out that we've done investigations for them like we have one this coming weekend um they've reached out to us and we're going to head out there and check that place out so where's that is it out there in tennessee it is it's from where I live, about hour and thirty minutes, about an hour and a half out in Centerville, Tennessee. Oh, all right. Can Can you tell us a little bit about the place? I mean, all I, all I really know is it it's it, it's a it's an event space now, but it actually used to be like actual horse stables that somebody eventually just converted into like an event space, and I'd seen where the they were putting on, you know. Uh, an investigation like a, a public event back around uh, February and I'd reached out to the, to the place just to kind of see if it was something they were going to continue to do, if it was like a one-off thing. And, and they were like, Oh, it just depends on how it goes, but you know, reach back out after the event. And we'll, we'll talk more then. And so I gave it, you know, about a week after the event and I'd actually reached out to somebody that I knew attended and she was like, you know, that was my first time doing something like that, but it seemed to be pretty active. Um, the, the team that kind of hosted the event didn't, they said, didn't really seem very professional. Um, or one of the per- people didn't. I mean, I, I don't really know, but I reached out to the owner a couple of days later and she kind of said the same thing. And she's like, you know, I still want you guys to come out, but, you know, I, I want to give it a little while to kind of let things settle down because I've never had this kind of um, reaction um, from my um, co workers, as she calls them, you know, the spirits there. And, uh, so I gave it about a month and I reached back out to her and just kind of talked to her and kind of, you know, told her how we do things and 
you know, we would come in and be respectful and, and stuff like that. And then she kind of told me some, a little bit of the backstory, but I don't think she really knows much of the history of the place either. I, I just know she's owned it for about seven years and she said it's been kind of active ever since she bought it. So. All right. And so how do y'all do things when you go in? Like, what do y'all, what do you do? What's your style? Yeah. Tell us. Yeah. Um, it, it really depends on the location. We don't really like to do a lot of research beforehand. We kind of like to go in kind of blind, um, Feel that. and then kind of re- and kind of research afterward to see if what happens with us is stuff that's happened before. If it's something that's never happened before, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, with a couple of the team members uh, being in the police field and the team being named after our best friend that was a police officer. When we go to a jail or a prison, we always um, bring um, like handcuffs and, and leg shackles and and Josh, you know, like he uh, he's a corrections officer. So he always kind of talks in that jail talk, not being disrespectful or hateful or anything, but kind of talking like, hey, it's lights out. If you guys don't stop this, you know, you're going to the hole, things like that. And mm-hmm. it kind of it always seems to kind of amp stuff up and whenever he kind of starts talking that way. Yeah, trigger items are always good. You know what I mean? That's going to bring yeah. them right to you. <laughs> yeah. So, heck yeah. Well, that sounds, you know, what, what prisons did you do? Um, Our first unofficial investigation, which was me and Josh, like I said, he's my best friend of 30 years and my, and my co-founder. Um, me and him and, and a few friends went up to Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary oh. um, in June of 2020. Um, and then that morning on the way home, it was... We had such an active night, and we had no equipment whatsoever. I mean, we had, I think we had a digital recorder and an EMF detector, and there was just stuff happening left and right. And it had been something me and him had talked about for years. And growing up, you know, him and my other best friend, Keith, are our teams named after. That was something we always talked about doing as we got older, going to all these different places and investigating and doing stuff like that. And in 2011, Keith, he was a police officer in our hometown, and he was shot and killed in the line of duty. And, you know, there was still something that was always in the back of my head that I wanted to do, you know, not only because I still wanted to do it, but now I wanted to do it for him. And after we left Brushy Mountain that morning, I told him, I was like, man, I was like, you know, we're on the wrong side of 40. We're not getting any younger. If we're going to do this thing, we need to do it now. Yep. Right. And he yep. was like, you know, I agree. He's like, let's, let's get it going. And and Keith is probably right there with y'all. <laughs> right. And so I had us a, a logo designed and a Facebook page up the next morning. Heck um, yeah. Put together a team. Um, there, there's, other than me and him, none of the original team is part of the team anymore. Um, some eternal stuff happened and we just kind of kicked everybody out. But ever since then, you know, like I said, unofficial, we started at Brushy Mountain and then we've done um, – the historic Scott County Jail in Huntsville, Tennessee. We've done that twice. We've done the Old Stone Jail up in Franklin, Kentucky twice. We've done the uh, Old Moore County Jail down in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Um, so we've done you know, quite a few um, jails and prisons and stuff. So there's quite a few more that's on our list, too. Awesome. Song. Yeah, excellent. So tell us um, – the uh, <laughs> the Octagon Hall. Did mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about the Octagon Hall. I, I, I found that's a that's an awesome place. It, like I said, since, since we started about three years ago, we have roughly, I'd say maybe thirty investigations under our belt, give or take. And Octagon Hall ranks in our top five of most active locations we've been to. And. It was actually a public event, so there was, I don't know, maybe 15 other people there besides just us. So maybe 20 people or so that were there. But we just kind of, they let us kind of go on our own since, you know, told them, you know, hey, we're a team. We kind of want to do our own thing. Mm-hmm. So they just kind of let us separate from the group. And and it's just like everywhere we went, there was something happening. You know, we heard growling in one room. Um, I remember seeing what looked like a, some fingers coming through the crack of a door. Oh my wow. God. Um, wow. And then there towards the end of the night, there was a, a person that was actually part of the event that was hosting, um, was kind of doing some provoking and it eventually affected my wife and another team member to the point where they, you know, they told us it was time to go and they did the whole sage and oil and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, 
the lady had told us, you know, when you guys leave, something's going to try to bring you back, but just keep going. And we were just like, oh, yeah, whatever. And <laughs> I kid you not, our, our GPS rerouted us and tried to get us to turn around three different times to go oh back to the Oh, that's wow. crazy. <laughs> Bucket list. And, I, and, and I'm just like, okay. In, in my head, I'm, we're all thinking, okay, that we go the other way, we're going farther into Kentucky when we need to be going south into Tennessee. And it just kept telling us to turn around and go the other direction. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. So that that place, it has a lot. That's like Civil War, right? A lot of Civil War. Um, I mean, I mean, they even have reports of like Bigfoot sightings on the property. Um, people like claims they, they've seen aliens in, in, in the sky and stuff. And and hmm. they and they have spirits, not just from the Civil War. I remember them telling us one story that there was a, a guy there visiting, just kind of walking the grounds, checking out the grounds. And this guy came out of the woods dressed like a hippie. And said he talked to him for a couple of minutes and turned around. The guy was gone. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think I read opinion, somewhere I that the way that it's designed is to pull stuff like that in, to pull paranormal activity into it. Uh, it's got to be something. I mean, I, I think that may be one of the few places we've been that actually may be a portal or something. Yeah. That's what I think, too. Or just the spirits just kind of pass through and they just kind of hang out for a minute and then go on. And of course, they have their are ones that are always there but like i said the growling that's what really threw me for a loop Mm -hmm. wow what do you what do you think it would have been i mean like i I, was it you think it was demonic or uh, i don't don't know if it was necessarily demonic it may just been you know because you know that word gets tossed around a lot it does yes if i had to take a guess just based on the history of the place and what I know about it, I would say maybe it was just somebody that just didn't want us in their room. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I honestly think that sometimes the spirits get tired of hearing their own stories or, you know, like sometimes right. I think they just don't want to be bothered. Right. Yeah. And then it, you have, uh, you know, spirits that sometimes they want the, the recognition, you know, yeah. not so much recognition, they but they want told. remembered. Yes. yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, where else have you got? Hotel Met, uh, Metropolitan, right? Mm-hmm. How was that place? Again, uh, one of the top, top five most active places we've been to, and I was completely surprised about how active it was. Um, I didn't even never even heard of the place, and um, another one of my friends who's who's an investigator, she had told me about it. And uh, she was like, you know, it was, it was a fairly decent night for us. It wasn't crazy with activity, but, you know, I think you'll have fun. I was like, oh, you know, why not? We'll give it a shot. And me and my wife actually went up the night before because we just kind of wanted, you know, a night away to ourselves and just kind of mm-hmm. relax and stuff. And, you know, when we got there, you know, the, the owner's like, here's the keys. Here's the alarm code. I'll see you guys in the morning. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, it's a bed and breakfast kind of type deal. I was like, I thought somebody was going to be here with us. They're like, no, you guys are here by yourself. Hmm. Like, all right, cool. Interesting. Yeah. I would love that. (laughs) And when she's kind of giving us a walk through the place, there was a door in the kitchen that popped open right in front of her. And we all saw it. And she's like, you know, that happens to me all the time. I'm not used to being in here after dark. So I'm kind of rushing through because I don't like being here in here after dark. And of course, as soon as she left me and my wife, went to that door and tried to debunk it opening. I was like, well, it had to have been like half closed or vibrated open or something. And we couldn't get it to open. Hmm. And, you know, for, throughout the night, um, we got to pick what room we stayed in. And we started with the door wide open because we just wanted to sleep with the door open. A couple hours later, she's like, you got to pull the door closed a little bit. And eventually we ended up closing the door. And she told me the next morning, cause she said it, cause it felt like there was people just standing at the door, just staring at us. And I was like, well, I, you know, I slept all night. I didn't feel any of that. So in the actual investigation, another team member came up and the first 45 minutes, it was just completely dead. No, no pun intended. Like nothing was happening. And this place was was built by an African American lady back in like the early 1900s for African American people because you know everything was segregated back then. So mm-hmm. she wanted a place for for black people just to come when they're traveling and stuff like that. And so, you know, word got out and it became a real popular place. So like a lot of well known musicians and and athletes and stuff would stay there. And I was like, well, you know, nothing's happening. Let's see what happens when we play some music. 
So turned on a BB King song because BB King was somebody who would stay there. And oh, we wow. had the SOS camera up. We had the SOS camera up and, and, and mapped in a figure. Oh. And a couple of seconds later, a little smaller figure mapped in beside it, and it looked like they were dancing to the music. <laughs> wow. That's I was cool. Like, well, that's, that's, I was like, that's pretty neat. So yeah. I was like, we turn it off, and as soon as we turn the music off, they both disappear. And I'm like, well, you know, these things are known for you know giving off a lot of false positives. Let's let's play another song and see what happens. Yeah. Turn on a more upbeat song. I think it was maybe Little Richard because Little Richard had stayed there. Turn on a more upbeat song, and they both popped up again as soon as the music started, and then they both looked like they were dancing to the music. <laughs> well, that's and, awesome. And as soon as the music cuts off. They both disappear. Um, <laughs> we captured one of our most, um, probably one of our most clearest EVPs up there. Um, nice. We were doing an Estes method session in the hallway, had the camera rolling, and you hear um, Ted ask a question, and then you hear my wife kind of whisper, who's that or who's Pop? And right at the camera, you hear a, a guy come through saying, that's not my name. Oh, wow. Ooh. And... What was wild about that, of course, when I recorded, I had it, uh, I set up the camera, I forgot to turn on night vision. So all you see is a red glowing exit sign through this whole video. Um, <laughs> right before the, the EVP comes through, probably about a minute and a half, I felt something rubbing my arm. And I called it out, hey, something's touching my arm. And probably 30 seconds after that, it started poking me on the arm. The same exact arm, and like that entire side of my arm, that entire arm got like freezing cold. Wow. And it was just, it was a wild place in that same door in the kitchen. It popped open two more times that night. And, yeah. and both times our other teammate witnessed it happening. And the first time he was just kind of walking through, um, then going in there to get him something to drink as we were taking a break yeah. and it, you know, it opened up and it freaked him out. And probably 30 minutes later, he was down there asking it, you know, please open this door for me. And he didn't have a camera on him, which I told him, I was like, dude, you should have had a camera. <laughs> but um, it opened like on command. He was like, please open this door again. And it popped open on him and it scared the hell out of him. <laughs> wow. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Seems yeah, like was, Kentucky's was, got a lot of places that have a lot of activity. It, it was, it was an amazing place. You also went to um, Waverly Hills Sanatorium, right? I've been, um, myself, um, this was before I ever had the team. It was back in like 2017. Mm -hmm. Um, Keith, like I said, who our team is named after, he actually introduced me to Waverly Hills back in like, gosh, like 2009 or something. And we had made it like a mission of ours to eventually try to go there. So when he passed away, that was like, that went to the top of my bucket list. I was like, I've got to go here. And so I ended up going between... June of 2017 and July of 2018, I went three different times. Heck yeah. And one of the, so many things happened every single time I went. Um, everything from disembodied voices to sounding like people was walking behind me when there's nobody there. We heard screaming. Uh, it felt like something was stabbing me in my stomach. It was just, Ew. it was, the place is insane. <laughs> yeah, I love Waverly Hills. Yeah, well, it's you know definitely one of the the top hot spots there is for paranormal activity. For sure. I always try to say you know Penhurst is is definitely number one, uh, but mm-hmm. uh, Waverly is I would say number two for for uh, activity. Yep, activity. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're great places. I've been there years ago, and uh, I I would definitely go back. Well, it's definitely um, on our bucket list as a team to, to go in there and, and do a private overnight, just just us as a group, and be, that'd be it. Um, so, so that's that's on the bucket list for the team. Yeah, and that would be good because overnight, uh, you, there's nobody else there. It's just you, you know. The private investigation right. is always the way to go. I try to tell people you can't really, you can't really. You, you can't a, do much on a, on a public investigation. Yeah. Right, because there's so many people I mean, there. Right. That's that's what I tell people, too. I'm like, you know, it's it's fun and everything if you're just going just to have some fun. But if you're going trying to take it seriously and actually 
do an investigation, I think it's almost impossible to yeah, do. Yeah, you're going to be frustrated for right, sure. Right, yeah, because yeah. you're going to hear someone's going to make a noise somewhere, somehow, and you're going to end right. up catching it, and you're going to be like, "What was that?" You know, then that's <laughs> right. the, it's going to make it even harder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, right. Now, did you have a tour guide when you was there? Or did they let you free roam, or how did they do? Um, that? the way they've done it back then, I don't know how they do it now, but um, however many people was there, they they separated. Uh, the people into two groups and then one tour guide had two floors and the other guy had three floors and they kind of separated those groups onto each floor. So there was, you know, probably 10 or 15 people on each floor at all times. And they would kind of give you a quick little walk through. Then you got to roam around for about an hour by yourself. Okay. All right. Now, yep. the, the, what kind of stories did, did you hear about from there? Like, uh, you know, there's always like a resident, uh, spirit or something like that. Did, did they give you anything like that there? Um, they taught us about Audrey. It, no, her, that was her sister's name. Oh, I can't Lois. remember the actual. Lois. Might have been Lois. Yeah. I believe so. And they taught us about her, and, and that was actually one of the EVPs I caught in her room. I asked, you know, I, I had asked, Who your sis, what's your sister's name? And it came through saying Audrey. Yeah. Yep. And she also they, likes they, Elvis, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Then, as soon as you play Elvis for, music for she she she'll act up. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think they told us that. If they did, I don't I don't remember it. So, yeah. Um, of course, they told us about her, and they told us about you know the the two different deaths uh, dealing with room five hundred two. Um, they told us about the uh, the gentleman who, who, after they had shut down, he was kind of like their unofficial guard, but he was like a homeless guy. Yeah, William. And you know somebody had killed him and and his dog. They mm-hmm. think he was murdered Sadie. or something. And, yeah. So, and that's all I really knew about the place when I went in. So, and I've done a little bit of research since then. Um, so it's definitely a place I want to get my team to. Yeah, Absolutely, I definitely yes. want to go back. I love Waverly Hills. Yeah, Ron, Ronnie knows a lot about Waverly. <laughs> so, I've been there four times. I was roommates with a couple of the guides and. So yeah, I love Waverly. It's kind of in my blood, right? <laughs> I mean, I love it too. I love it so much. I've got a tattoo on my chest. So. Oh well, you got with wow. your mouth off. I ain't yes. went that far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so tell me this: what what is like? What's like your ideal place that you would like to investigate? Uh, and and it's just a public. Could be anything. Could be catacombs. Could be anything. Well, for me. Personally, like the top place uh, of my bucket list that that if I had to stop doing this tomorrow, where they said you can do one last place, go wherever you want, I'd be going to Trans Allegheny. There you go. There's another yeah. one right there. I know so, nothing I mean, of this place. What's about? Tell me all about it. Tell 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 Ronnie a little bit about what as much as you know. Anyway, I mean, <laughs> I know it, it. It it was was. Pretty sure this was the one that was, or was that um, the one you were talking about a minute ago? Um, well, one Pennhurst? I just went blank. Yes. One of them was shut down because, you know, it was so horrific what was going on there. Which, oh, I can't remember which one it was. Yeah, Pen, um, that's Penhurst yeah, got Penhurst. shut down because of was that. It, was it Penhurst? Yeah, okay. So I'm getting the two mixed up. Um, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Um, but it was... Um, I want to say it was uh, a, a mental ward and, and some other stuff. It was just, I don't know. It was, it's a, a lot of bad shit happened there. I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss, but there's a lot of bad stuff that went on there. Yeah. And, you know, they just say you could spend a week there and not even scratch the surface of it. Wow. Um, so, and that's just one of those places that, it, you know, it's so huge and there was so much, you know, tragedy and sadness happened there. It's like, there's no way it's not just hopping with activity. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's a looks like it's right in West Virginia too, babe. It's not far. Yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. a that's another one. I I don't know what it is with these uh, these Waverly Hills, Penhurst, uh, Trans Allegheny, but they are like the top spots. That this uh, probably because of everything that was going on, and I don't mean like disease wise, because uh, a lot of it had to do with with. Uh, diseases and things but it was uh it's more of the abuse that took place right that and the and the the unethical experiments they would do on people and stuff like that exactly. so you know it's just 
just so much tragedy and sadness in these places and and, and all these people that just that there's nothing they can do about it. Right. Right. And I think, you know, that residual energy is just going to keep going and going and going. I mean, that's just, that's just how I look. I mean, if I was, I, I don't know. I just think some of the things they did was just like, <laughs> I, I can't even wrap my head it's around horrible. it. horrible. Right. So tell us about, uh, you. did you go to the, I don't know if you went or not, but I'm, I'm just asking, did you go to the, uh, the haunted United Methodist Village? We're going there at the end of June. Can you tell us a little that, bit um, about the place? I have no idea. I, I've, I was just looking through. I'm, I'm just on your your Facebook page, uh, you know, and I'm just curious on on some of these places that you have listed. And that's why I said I don't know if you went there or not. So anybody listening, it's uh, RKB Paranormal. That's their Facebook page. Please go check them out. Um, it's. I don't think it's a really well-known location yet. Um, and I don't think that it's, from what I could gather, whoever owns it is eventually going to, I think, turn it into like a, an apartment complex or something. Well, it's definitely so big. Trying, right. It, it's going to end up being probably the biggest location as a team. we've Actually, I know it's the biggest location as a team we've ever investigated. It was an old, it was a nursing um, facility. And they have... You know, of course, they had different wards, and it shut down in different stages. Like the first part of it shut down, I think I read in like maybe 2008, and then another part shut down in like 2012, and the last part just shut down, I think, and they said in like September of 2021. So, but, you know, the people that I've talked to from there just said it's just so much stuff happening. Like it's it's hard to keep up with everything, everything that's going on, and every team that's come in – and investigated since I started doing it, it has experienced something totally different from the other teams. So it's like always something new. It seems like is going on. And so we're going to hit up that place and we're staying in a bed and breakfast for the weekend up, up in that area too. And I don't think the place is haunted, but just the looks of it, mm-hmm. it looks like it could be haunted. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we're really looking forward to that one. That's going to be at the end of June. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I see they have a couple of videos on their on their Facebook page here of some unexplainable stuff that took place. So I, I just kind of I think it's fascinating. Like these places, um, like a United Methodist place. You know, it's kind of like mm-hmm. well, that's like a godly place. Why would it be so haunted? You know what I mean? Like right. some some people will say, hey, this church, you know, it's got demonic activity. But I always kind of I don't know. I kind of like raise an eyebrow with that because I'm like, well, if it that's that's sacred ground, you know, that's hollow ground. Right. How, how what could be? How could it be? I don't yeah, know. Right. That, I feel what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it, who knows? I, I have no idea. The place is big, and then if they're going to turn it into apartments, man, that's even weirder. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that too. I was like, you know, how's that going to work out for them? You know? Yeah, you're, you're they're all, not going to be able to keep tenants. Yeah, you're already you're already. <laughs> Rowling up the spirits. Unless they're you know? paranormal investigators and that's their thing, you there know. You but go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what about you, Damien? You would you how would you like to open up your own haunted location? I would love that. I would absolutely love it. I mean, if I knew like a hundred percent that I could go out tomorrow and and purchase a haunted location and it would 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 keep me afloat just doing investigation right? there and mm-hmm. doing this and that. I I would I would probably quit my day job. I feel Absolutely, that. I feel that. <laughs> if I ever win the lottery, it's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> but I, you know, it would just it would just be it'd be something different. You know, not only do you have the haunted aspect of it, you have the history of it that you can you have to learn about if you don't already know the history of the of the building and just just learning all this stuff about it. I just think we've just. It'd be great. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, dream job for people like us. You're in Tennessee, right? Right. Dixon. Yeah. Dixon. I okay. used to live in um, Nashville and Hendersonville out there for eight okay. years, okay. almost eight years. Yeah. So you're you're out there. Do, do you ever drive past some of these houses? We do it here, and, and we're in Pennsylvania, so we drive past some of these houses, and it's like you know the, they're abandoned, or, and I'm like. Man, I wonder mm-hmm. if that place is haunted, you know? <laughs> well, sometimes you just get a feeling about <laughs> yeah, them, you yeah. know? Right. Well, so, we just, uh, 
my wife and I just bought a house and we just moved a couple weekends ago. And uh, I see the house beside us is abandoned. And one of the neighbors, you know, told us it's been abandoned for like 10 years. And wow. they wow. left up like the woman who owned it had, had passed away. And the daughter just pretty much just locked the doors and left everything in there. And my oldest son, he's like, so we live next to a haunted house. I was like, eh. I was like, they didn't say she died in the house, but, <laughs> but I'll be out walking the dog in the middle of the night. And I just kind of look over there and it just kind of gives you that feeling. Like the other night I was out walking her and there was absolutely no wind whatsoever. And the screen door like flew open. Whoa. Wow. Okay. And I was like, and I got to looking around. I'm like, okay, the trees aren't moving. I don't feel any wind. I was like, that's a little weird. So it just, I don't know. I, I want to go in just to look around and see if I can sense anything. But at the same time, if it's been abandoned for 10 years, I also don't want to fall through the floor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. We, so, we have like a, a house that we would definitely like to check out, but there's a freaking hornet's nest on there. And I bet you that <laughs> thing, you know what I'm talking about. We was just there. Yeah. It's like freaking two foot. But, uh, long and it's just huge around. I'm like, yeah, I think yeah. we're just going to skip yeah, yeah. that place. We'll just let it sit there. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's actually what we did growing up as teenagers. We would find these abandoned houses and we would more or less break into them just to see if anything was going on in there. Um, so that's kind of how we cut our teeth as teenagers. We yeah. would uh, more or less just break into these old abandoned houses or go to any cemetery that we heard might be haunted and we would just kind of try to do some stuff so right and right I, I noticed that the stories you're telling that you you like to de- debunk things we todd and i are like that's something to happen and we will try to figure out every possible excuse of why these things are happening and you know right so because we've had because, a few, because, few activities up in here lately <laughs> right because you know any any true investigator knows that that everything that happens isn't going to be paranormal exactly. that's right exactly that's right. And, and and that's what i hate about a lot of these tv shows and even a lot of the big youtube channels that they don't try to debunk anything they just automatically say that it's something that was paranormal yeah. yes and so i mean we even do that we even did that at the, the place we moved out of. We would have stuff going on there. Me and my wife would try to debunk it before we were like, okay, well, that had to be in something paranormal. So, you know, just stuff we would have happen there, we would try to debunk before we just say, okay, well, that was George or whoever is, is haunting our house. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, and it, and you know it's a shame because you see a lot of it. I mean, I see a lot of fakes. I've been doing this for twenty eight mm-hmm. years. I mean, I know what's involved. You have to. I did all residential and business places, so you have to be like a carpenter, a plumber. You have to know all these different things because when you go in, you know one person's ghost could be another person's mouse. You know what I mean? So you have right. to, you have to know these different things and how they work and you know old radiators you have to know if there's air in it mm-hmm. and if it's making noise and yeah it's it's a, there's a lot to it it's not just going into a house and right you know setting up a camera it's it's a, it's a big thing it's yeah, different it and we even like to show that like on, on what we put on our YouTube channel and stuff as well like like one video for instance we was at um an old funeral home down in Lynchburg, Tennessee. And Josh had, had volunteered to go upstairs by himself. And he was like, I'll just go up here. He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to sit for a few minutes just to see kind of what happens. And so we all stayed downstairs and he had the, he had this rim pod set up on a chair and he had a EMF detector kind of propped up on the chair. And so after about 10 minutes, I radioed him and I was like, Hey, you know, how's it going up there? And he he was like, he's like, it's been quiet until just right now. He's like, now the REM pods are going crazy. And it just kept going off. And we were talking back and forth on the radio. And I was like, well, I got to come up here and check this out. And when we got upstairs, the uh, the EMF detector, as soon as we walked in the room, just flew off the chair. And like I said, that EMF detector had been sitting there stationary for a good 15 minutes. And, uh, of course, we did figure out that the REM pod was going off because of our radios. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, I know radios could cause it to go off. I was like, let me go downstairs just to make sure that's what it was. Yeah. And sure enough, that's what it was. But we couldn't debunk the EMF detector. Because so I put it back up there and put it in the exact same spot. And I, I walked around this chair in circles. I jumped up and down on the floor thinking maybe one of us had vibrated it off and it never moved. Hmm. And like it, le- it looked like somebody just took their hand and just, just knocked it off the chair. Wow. And 
Now we could debunk the the REM pod, but the other one we we couldn't figure it out. Right, right. Now I, I I'm on your Facebook uh, or your YouTube right now, and uh, mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about the Old Moore County Jail. Um, the, that was one of our least active nights. Like it wasn't totally dead. I mean, we did have a a few things that we kind of left a scratch in our head. Um, that night it was just me and Josh, and it's actually right across the road from that funeral home I was just telling you about. Um, and of course it's a museum and stuff too, like a lot of these places are. Um, so it has a lot of historical stuff down in the in the bottom part. Of course, the cells are just the cells. So we just spent our whole time up there. Um, remember, we had a really really strange Estes method session. Um, with the necrophonic, like whoever was coming through was just being hateful and just, just cussing and all this other stuff. And, and, and this was, uh, one of the own, actually the only time we've ever done any kind of what would you would call provoking because whoever resides up there, they've nicknamed him Mr. Nasty. And they hmm. said, that's the only way you can get him to interact with you is if you're kind of mean, to kind him. of hateful with him, kind of mean to him yeah. and kind of a smart ass to him. Yeah. Can't be so, salty. <laughs> I was like, well, I was like, if that's what you say works, you know, and uh, I remember, like I said, there was just some hateful stuff coming through on that. And we had a, a boo bear that we had sitting in the hallway for like an hour had never went off. And all of a sudden it just starts going off by, its, you know, just like going right. off like crazy. And I was like, that's you know really strange. And right before it started going off, I remember seeing like this dark shadow out of the corner of my eye, like run down that hallway. And that's when this bear started going off. Mm. And uh, and the only other thing I really recall about about this place is we had um, decided to take a break, and we went outside, but we left the camera rolling in one of the cells and had it focused on the rim pod and some trigger objects we left in there. And about 10 minutes after we went outside, you hear what sounds like one of the cell doors slamming shut. Wow. And we thought, and we thought that was pretty cool. There was nobody in the building because the, the guy that was – kind of overseeing and staying there with us. He was outside with us talking. Yeah. Isn't that so funny? That we, happens a lot when you decide you're just going to take a break and then yes. the spirit's like, oh, right. no, you're not. It seems <laughs> to happen a lot when you're least expecting it. Yeah, when you it, least yes. expect it, when you're just shooting the shit, you know. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So. Pardon and, my uh, language. <laughs> no, that, that, that's that's the kind of language I use the first time <laughs> we was at the old Scott County Jail in in. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have watched the video of what happened at the Scott County Jail with us, but it was where, where we seen the pitcher get knocked off the wall. No, I have. Uh, seen yes, that we yet. did. We did not see it yet. We no, we have well, you. We well, have you right here, and we're gonna <laughs> check it. We're, we'll be checking. Trust me. Yeah, for sure. I want to know about Rosemont. What happened to you at Rosemont? I used to live right down the road from that place. Um. Uh. Me and my wife actually wanted wanted us to get married there, but um, it ended up being way out of our price range. But uh, mm-hmm. my our oldest son, you know, he's he's my stepson, but you know he's my son. Yeah, yeah. He had, he had always wanted to go with us on an investigation. I was like, I was like, man, he's like, you're not going to be able to go because a lot of these places you have to be at least eighteen to go. And I was like, as soon as I find a place, you know, we can take you on. You know, we'll take you on one. And I'd seen where um. They were having a public event at Rosemont, and I was like, said you had it was like a all ages thing, and I was like, well, you know, I've heard about Rosemont, and you know, I haven't heard anything negative being there, and heard it's all kind of like friendly things. I was like, it should be fine to take him there. Yeah. And so you know, I got the tickets, and you know, we went and uh, ended up meeting uh, a few people there that uh, not only one of I come become really good friends with, they've all been on, on my podcast as well. And, uh, but we kind of got grouped with, um, one of my good friends now, his name's Lee. And we had, was in this one office and Jake had sat down at the desk and we were doing, you know, we're doing the flashlight thing. And he was like, you know, if you don't like Jake sitting at your desk and you turn this flashlight off, flashlight went off. Mm. And he was like, okay, if you want Jake to get up out of your seat, turn it back on. And it came back on. And so it kind of, it kind of freaked him out a little bit. And it, it, it did that for, you know, a couple of minutes, more or less telling him, get out of my, get out of my desk, yeah. you know, move away from my desk. And a little while later, 
Um, again, we was still with Lee, and we was in. I remember where we were, I think we were like in like the main like um, foyer of the of the of the house, mm-hmm. and again we were doing the flashlight experiment. We had it; they had it set up on a table, and Jake had squatted down beside the table and was just videoing it, you know, going off and stuff. And all of a sudden, it just goes rolling off the table. What? And, and Jake was able to capture that in video, and he was like. He was like, oh, my gosh, I just – he talked about that place for probably two weeks. And and <laughs> funny enough that uh, – I don't remember which one of those videos it is. I think it's the one that came up the desk. It's it's our most viewed uh, video on our YouTube page. I'm here, still here with you. I just get lost <laughs> in your videos. <laughs> <That's all>. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at pictures of Rosemont. Now. Yeah, I'm like Rosemont. All right, then. <laughs> I just have heard some people talk about some some dark activity there, and I was curious as to if you've experienced that at all. You see, like I said, we, me and my wife went there during the day just to, cause we wanted to check the place out, and um, we got a tour of the place, and of course. As soon as the tour was done, I was like, so is this place haunted? And he was like, I kind of figured you guys were those kind of people. And he kind of <laughs> laughed about it. And then, of course, you know, he wanted to tell us some stuff that, you know, he had experienced there and, and stuff like that. And none of it sounded bad. Um, uh, I know Ghost Hunters just did an episode there. Oh, did and, they? I didn't know that. And then, you know, it's they're one of those shows that it's, I want to believe some of it, but some of it I can tell is like, okay, that's just BS. Yeah, I feel and that. If everything they captured was legit, it was it was a very active night for them at that place. And uh, but that's a location that that I want to go and actually investigate, like as a team, because like I said, a public event. There were so many people there. Yeah. But, but we did, but we did experience a few neat things that that Jake gets to talk about once once we left. So. That's yeah. cool. There's and, a couple of places in Gallatin that's actually got some activity. The Trousdale um, Museum that's on the main strip and um, Locust Avenue and the um, old theater downtown, you know, near the square. I've heard, yeah, I've heard heard about that one. And I actually got to help out at an event at Trousdale. I got asked to help and had no no information about the building. I didn't know anything about it. I just went to help. And then the, the antique store right across the road from Rosemont is haunted. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called Pickle Treats and Antiques. Everybody calls it the Spooky Pickle. And yeah, yeah. That was part. They were part of the event that night, and so we got to go over there. And there was a couple of weird things that happened, but and, and she allows investigations there too. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I, mean, I think she only charges. I think she only charges like fifty dollars, and you get to be there for like six or seven hours. Oh, well, that's cool. I know that I've walked so, by that museum and always sent something up in the the attic area. And a funny thing, we used, I lived right down the road from it, and when we first moved there, my ex was in bed sleeping, and I we had just moved there, and I looked into the hallway and I saw a man standing there. And I was like, what, mm. what the crap? You know, it kind of took me aback a little bit. And then, right. you know, we went walking a couple of days later, and we walked past that museum, and I wanted to read the thing, you know, how they have the little markers there. And I noticed that it was it was the guy. It was Trousdale. He was there in my house. And I was like, whoa. Like, wow. I'm thinking maybe where, that land where my house was maybe was servant quarters or something. You know what I'm saying? But. It was it's crazy. Awesome, yeah. yeah, there was always something going on in that house. It was pretty cool. I like living in haunted houses. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. I like Gallatin. They got some, there's activity there for sure. Oh, yeah. So, so what, what's like, what's your favorite piece of equipment when you go into a place? What What's the piece of equipment that you probably couldn't deal without? Yeah, what's your go-to? Um, and, and now that I've got one, um, I, I think my favorite piece is the REM pod. I mean... Just to set it up in a room and you walk away and there's nothing in the room and so it just starts going crazy. Yeah, and that's a good like, choice. It, it's like, okay, I was like, maybe we can explain that, but at the same time, there's nobody in this room. There's nobody walking around causing vibration. You know, there's no open doors or windows causing a breeze for the temperature to change. I was like, what's I was like, what's really going on in here? And 
and like I said, where we moved from, you know, we had stuff going on in, the, in, in that place. And I would set the rim pot up occasionally when stuff would start happening. And it would start going off when pretty much on command. Whoa. So, so what do you think of like, um, <clears throat> like, see, when I, when I used to really get into to investigating, we used to look up like solar flares and things like that. What, what do you think about that? Uh, I mean, I think all that kind of stuff like that and in the environment in general can, can, can help fuel the activity. Um, just like, I believe, you know, water can to an extent, limestone can to an extent. So, um, I'm one of those people that I don't want to say buy into it, but I believe that, that all that stuff can, can definitely, uh, maybe not cause it, but help kind of fuel it up a little bit. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Because my thing was with like solar flares is it will disrupt it disrupts electric electronics. So mm-hmm. you know, and they they happen all the time. So like sometimes you go into a place and it's just like like you were saying, well, there was nothing there, nobody's there, nobody's around. So why did it go off? So right. you know, I my brain just goes to like. <laughs> So solar activity is doing it, you know, I'm not trying to rule it out, uh, completely, but my, my brain goes into all these different scenarios and I'm like, how do I I prove the solar flare thing? So I'd have to look it up. (laughs) So yes. (laughs) What about like EVPs? EVPs to me are, um, I find that pretty credible. I mean, there's, if there's nobody around, where did the voice come from? Yeah, that's that. That was going to be like the probably the number two on my list. I, I like the REM pod just because it's it it makes noise and lights up, and you know when something's happening. That's um, right, something is there when it goes off. So, but like an EVP, I mean, if you have a digital recorder and that's all you have, you can investigate for hours. Yeah, I think that's my favorite. And, and just to capture one clear EVP in my opinion, is is worth sitting through hours of, of evidence review. Absolutely, right? yes. Exactly. Like uh, like the one we captured at the Hotel Metropolitan, if nothing else would have happened that night, and that EVP was the only thing that, that we captured on, whether audio or video, it was worth it because it was clear as day. Right, absolutely. Because really, all you really need is yourself because you are the most dialed in piece of equipment there is. Right. All your senses and feelings. And then a recorder, definitely. And you're like, mm-hmm. you, you got it because you're going to, you're going to sense temperature fluctuations and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. all them different things. But yeah, I've always been fascinated with EVPs for some reason. What, what, what do you think about, uh, like, uh, not like uh, oh, what am I trying to think of here? Like like ghost boxes, uh, but digital. You know, like like the necrophonic. Um, I think some of them's BS, but I think some are legit, like kind of like necrophonic, because we've had a lot of intelligent responses come through when we've used the necrophonic, and it adds up to what we're at. You know, we're talking about. Um. And they're wordless. Like it it's a wordless bank thing, isn't it? I believe so. Yeah, and so yeah, and it's just like ever. You know, there are some people that say it's just a, a, a money making scheme and all this. I'm like, okay, maybe that's so. But I'm sitting there having an intelligent conversation with my phone, <laughs> and it's answering everything I'm asking. Like I'm talking to like the actual person right in front of me. I was like, so how do you explain that? Exactly. Right. Yeah, and we. <laughs> trying to get my tablet here <laughs> so we we use a bunch of those too but i like the wordless ones also like hope spirit box that one's that one is uh they're they're banks i think there's five in that and they're wordless and i'm like how does even wordless bank even work if there's no words in it <laughs> right <laughs> but the we have the necrophonic and then uh necrophone I ended up getting that one. Um, we got the miracle box. I think it was two bucks. Uh, so I, you know, I'm 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 very much into trying these things. In fact, another one that works really good for us is uh, Ghost. It's Ghost Tube Vox. 
It's it's a it's a couple. Yeah, I, think of bu- I think I've heard of that one. Yeah, it's 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 like a couple of bucks a month, but I, that's why I'm asking. You know what what you feel about them because a lot of people. I mean, sure, there there's a lot of fake ones out there, but these these wordless bank ones seem to to be give us intelligent answers too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's my, on my end or your end, but I'm hearing static and stuff now. Oh, <laughs> that's weird. Huh. You know, we have had. I been, didn't hear. It. We've had some weird things. We've been having here. some weird stuff going on here. Uh, you know, definitely paranormal that that we believe. So it could be affecting. Yeah, that's it true. could be affecting. And us. it was in this room too. And are they still in here? Are we gonna say y'all don't hear out? that? <laughs> Honey, did you take the haunted no, dolls out of here? They're right. Oh, they're still in here. Okay then. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's let's delve into um, life beyond six feet. Okay, because you are a podcast host too, right? Correct. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit about about your podcast. Yeah, well, whenever um, me and Josh had got interviewed for our first podcast back, I think it was like January of twenty twenty one. You know, we had got interviewed by um, a podcast. I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then we didn't get interviewed um, for another one until actually the day after we went to Scott County Jail for the first time. So we had a hell of a story to tell. And uh, and that was back – that was like eight months later in October. And I was like, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty neat. And I got to talking to him. I was like, you know, maybe we should do something like that just to kind of, you know, meet some new people and just – just to kind of, you know, just to have something else to do more or less. And he was like, yeah, we could do that. And we talked about it and nothing ever came of it. And we talked about it again and nothing ever came of it. And I brought it up again one day and I was like, you know, if we ever actually start this, I was like, I I have a name for it. And it was life beyond six feet. And I actually got that when we first started the team I had this idea in my head. I wanted the team to have like a, I don't really know what you would call it, a a, a tagline, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. And so I had, so I had like each member of the team come up with like a tagline and I was just going to, I was going to pick which one I like best. And life beyond six feet was one that just always stuck out to me. And I told him I was like, you know, we've got to use that for something. I was like, whether it's the tagline for the team, I was like, I was like, we have to use it for something. I was like, it just sounds really cool, and I just, I just, it stands out. Yeah. And so it, all, it stuck in my head for two years. And when I told him, I was like, when we start this, I was like, that's what I want to call. It. And actually, the the team member that came up with that, he's actually part of the team again. He was the one team member that did, didn't get mad at us when we kicked everybody out. <laughs> Um, so we eventually brought him back and, yeah. uh, and when I, when I told him, we told him we were going to use that as the, the podcast name, he was like, he just thought that was like super cool. And so, like I said, when I finally decided to do it, I reached out to somebody, they got me a, a, a logo and stuff designed. And my very first episode was actually spur of the moment. Um, had no clue how to do it. I, the guy I interviewed, uh, his name is Eric Freeman Sims. He actually does the unseen paranormal podcast. Um, he's become a really good friend of mine. I actually met him at Rosemont that night and, uh, he was like, we well, can do it, you know, several different ways. He's like, this is how I started out doing it, but I eventually moved to this. So, you know, I do mine via zoom mm-hmm. Yes, and I do it through zoom. Um, I don't, I don't edit anything. I, I simply add the intro music and I upload it a week after I, I record it. Yeah. So, yeah. Everything's raw. Everything's uncut. You know, if there's we get sidetracked talking about something non paranormal, it, it stays in there. If there was one episode just a few weeks ago, the guy's phone rang and he was like, "Can you edit that out?" I was like, "Nope." I was like, "It's staying in." <laughs> <Right>. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was just it was just something I wanted to do. And like I said, I'm I'm approaching the end of season two, and I've already got I was like five or six episodes booked for season three. So, awesome. and, and I've been doing it almost a year now. So nice. Nice. Now, do you do, uh, do you do lives or is yours pre-done? Like ours is, ours is pre-recorded. Um, 
it's all pre-recorded. We have done one live interview that we actually done at the Old Stone Jail in Franklin, Kentucky, and we actually investigated right after we done the the live stream interview. Mm-hmm. Nice. And it, and it was actually a, a fairly active night that that night too, and uh, had some crazy stuff going on with a spirit box that night. So, um, but yeah, that's the only live one we've ever done. Um, I've talked about doing it um, like on special occasions. Um, yeah, we've talked about that too. So, but yeah, I've done one live arrest of them. Like I said, I record them on Sundays and I'll release them a week later. Yeah. And, and it seems like the, the lives are nice and all, but mm-hmm. when I, I've talked about it and I've talked to other people and they're like, well, I get really nervous. And I'm like, that's why I like audio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. you, you don't have to get nervous about anything. You're just having a conversation. Yeah. So you right. don't you don't have to dress up or you know yeah, fix it's yourself. Like talking on the phone to somebody, really. <laughs> That's right. so, which literally well, I, we I are. Her, you know, I let everybody know up front. I was like, "Hey, I record via Zoom." They're like, well, "Do I have to get dressed?" I was like, "You can just, you know, you can come in for mowing the grass for all I care." <laughs> right. I was like, right. "But I do, <laughs> but I do, I do warn them up front." I was like, "I do upload the video portion to the YouTube channel as long as you're okay with that, and and nobody's had an issue with it." So. Yeah, yeah, and that's good too. And I've, and, I've, and I've actually found, at least at least with my my podcast, that I have way more views on the YouTube that I actually have listens via like Spotify and stuff like that. Yeah, and see, we're completely opposite. Yeah, we're the total opposite. Uh, of ours, that. ours, we hardly <laughs> get anybody, and we we really are Spotify, uh, Apple, right. uh, Amazon. They're all way up. <laughs> so we're completely on the opposite. We're like, how do we get the YouTube listeners? I know, right? Subscribers? Like, what do we have to do? I'm like, we put the stuff there. It's just <laughs> – Hashtags? Like, what, is, what do they want on YouTube? Come on. Yeah. Well, we use – I think Paranormal is like – that's the top one. That's like 3 million or enough, not more for <laughs> – so, Maybe we have to call it naked paranormal. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. you probably get tons of people. I'm sure. I know, right? <laughs> so, so you have life beyond six feet. I love the name. The name is awesome. I love that too. That's cool. And and uh, and you talk to big people too. So, yeah, yeah. So now, when you like your your show when you first started it, where did you see yourself in like? You know, you know how you, you kind of you project on where you're going to be. Like when you first started, where did you project yourself in the next year or the year after? I honestly didn't think I'd get through season one. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was I, like, well, you know, if it goes over well, cool. If not, then you know, I didn't waste any money doing it. So. Yeah, you know, I was the same way. So, except I, I actually have quite a bit of money into my my studio, you know, <laughs> and and it's all road products. So, you know, I'm like, well, if I'm gonna use money, I might as well buy the best. <laughs> and I right. myself didn't have a choice. I just kind of got roped into it. Like, hey, my partner's not here, and I'm going to need you to do it with me. And then the, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> a year <Right>. later. <laughs> <laughs> so what where, where's your uh where's your your uh team how many people are in your your team oh let's see there's of course there's me and josh um my wife's been a part of the team almost from the beginning she joined about two months after we started um so it's me him and her her sister so that's four our oldest son's actually part of the team so nice. five um six seven Seven total with two potential new members, like kind of on the ropes. So yeah, that's cool. Nice, Heck nice. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you, do you guys all collaborate with the the uh, evidence, or is there like certain people that do like video and audio and things like it's that? It's all me. Oh, okay. Well, that <laughs> it makes is it all me. Yes. <laughs> now, do you? Whenever you get like a, and and this is just, I'm just asking because I don't know. Whenever you get like a, an EVP, um, and and you're, of course, you're the one doing the analysis, so you're going to be like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, it said this. Now, do you ask them 
to tell you what they hear. And then, if, and then you kind of take that consensus and be like, okay, well, if, you know, four people heard it, then it must right. be what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. I, I definitely, I definitely will, will get their opinions on it too. Like, especially when, at, at home, you know, if I capture something and I'll, I'll listen to it, you know, half a dozen times. I'm like, okay, I think we've got something. So then I'll get my wife. It's like, Hey, listen to this. What do you think? And then she'll hear something and then, Hey, Hey Jake, what, what do you hear? And then, and then I'll eventually get it to where I can send it to Josh and send it to, you know, other people before I actually put it out there. So I want to get like everybody's thoughts on it. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's why I was just curious. Cause I, I used to do similar to what you did. I, I would, I did the analysis and then I would say, Hey, this is what I, this is what I got. Tell me what you hear. You know, because right. I, I'm not going to tell them what I heard because then yeah. now we're going to get into paradelia back and forth, right. you know. Right, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, well, I'll tell you what. I I really – I think that what you're doing I think is, is awesome and how you're going about it. And I I definitely – from hearing the way that, you, that you're talking about these different places and you're passionate about the paranormal for sure, because mm-hmm. just how you said, you know, you, you want to do the debunking and you don't want, you don't want the fake stuff. People, there's too much fake stuff. Yes, there is. So you're going right. about it like, Hey, we're going to, if we hear a bump, we want to know what that bump was. So right. I, I think you guys are going to be, you guys are going to do really, really good. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, let's see here. I, I had one other question. I don't know what I do with it. <laughs> no, That's called old age. That know, is old age. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all right. Well, Damien, I, I had such a wonderful time talking to you. You're a very easy person to talk to. Yes. And we definitely, well, thank you. we definitely want to have you back on again for sure. Yeah, yeah just let me know. Yeah, all right, absolutely. Then. Well, you know what? Thank you so much for your time. And, uh, we're going to make sure that uh, we keep in touch and we keep seeing what's going on with, with you because we, I, f- I feel that you're going to, your team's going to really. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He's legit. Yes. You're legit. Too legit to quit. So. That's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening out there, it is RKB Paranormal. You can see them on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, are you on Spotify? Uh, the show's on Spotify, um, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast. Um, I, it's on like 10 or 15 different formats. So. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. Awesome good, good. And, of course, um, you can find the team and the the podcast, like you said, on YouTube and Facebook. We also have a, a, a TikTok, a Twitter, and Instagram. So we're on like all the social yeah, media. Yeah, you got so. all the social covered. <laughs> right. And we have a website. And we have a website. Yeah, we saw that too, sir. Go no, check them no. out, people. Yes. Uh, well, thank you so much, Damien. It was an honor talking to you. And uh, yes, sir. thank you, guys. You're all welcome. right, you take care now. Have thank a great you night. so much. All right, thank you. All right, bye bye. Bye. Good night. Hey, thanks for tuning in with us tonight, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and follow to receive notifications when new content from Paranomaly Podcast is made available. If you believe you have something paranormal happening in your home or business, or you believe you may have witnessed a UFO or UAP, please send us your story, your photos, videos, questions, suggestions, and your comments to paranomalypodcast at gmail.com. You can also visit us at www paranomalypodcast.com for more content and information including all our social links hey thanks again for watching and listening and i hope that you tune in for next week's episode of paranomaly Hey, a word of caution. Paranomaly Podcast and its affiliates or hosts do not verify or check the validity of any person, team, or its members. 
Paranomaly Podcast highly advises that you proceed with caution when contacting any person or team before allowing them and having them into your home or business. A legit paranormal research and investigation team will never charge you a fee to investigate your home or business. They do, however, accept donations to help further the research and investigations if you so choose to do so. All right. Thanks, everybody.